दिख रहा है स्टार्ट हो गया ना ठीक है ओके चलो अभी स्टार्ट करते हैं ठीक है डन डन गुड आफ्टरनून वंस अगेन सॉरी फॉर द टेक्निकल ग्लिच वी विल स्टार्ट दिस वेबिनार अगेन we should be getting used to uh, all this digital way of uh, working things uh, but then there are some glitches we cannot avoid uh, but we'll start this webinar again uh, thank you very much for your patience and uh, uh, yes uh, uh, the, in this particular webinar we will talk, talk about major major for fundamentals of all the commodities we will talk about uh, 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 commodity technicals and that's how the structure of the webinar would look like we'll start with uh, one of the basic uh, a uh, commodity which is gold which every investor wants to have in their portfolio the reason why we need to understand gold because it is an important asset class for investors it acts as a hedge against uh, hedge against inflation and it really has its emotional cultural and financial value attached to it uh, besides uh, hedge against inflation uh, whenever there is an uncertainty investors flock for one of the safe haven assets in the world and gold really uh, fits the bill and hence uh, gold is very important uh, in any investors portfolio and hence it is necessary to understand where is the gold price headed but before we do that uh, there are some basic necessities you need to understand <clears throat> from an investing perspective uh, china russia australia and us are one of the key producers of gold while on the other side of the graph you can clearly see uh, that out of 100 tons of gold produced uh, across uh, globally 50% of it goes for consumption of jewelry which means uh, uh, the, it there is a heavy emphasis on consumption or as far as jewelry side is concerned uh, it is then followed by demand from central banks bar and coins which uh, constitutes heavy component of the gold demand so which means uh, the out of the global supply of say 4000 tons almost 50% of it say 2000 tons is consumed in the form of jewelry and hence uh, uh, this asset class plays an important role in any investor's portfolio depending on what kind of returns uh, one is looking at uh, if you are uh, in india and you really want to have gold as a part of your portfolio there are three to four options available to you as an investor the one and the easiest way of buying uh, gold is uh, to purchase physical gold via any, any jewelry shop Uh, jewelry is one of the uh, best ways to buy gold followed by coins and bars as explained in the previous slide if you do not want to buy jewelry because you do not have such heavy pockets uh, what you can do is uh, uh, you can have uh, google uh, gold accumulation plans uh, which is a digital platform provided by google pay paytm phone pay in conjunction with mmtc pam which is one of the um, uh, top most refiners not only in india but also globally uh the third option that uh, indian investors have is in the form of sovereign gold bonds uh, sovereign gold bonds are for those who wants to stay invested in gold for a longer period of time and uh, the best part about this particular investment in, uh, investment is that uh, you uh, get interest for your investment in gold uh, the other criteria to hold this sovereign gold bonds is that the maturity stands for 8 year the lock in period is for 5 years the next option to buy gold is in the form of exchange traded funds uh, which is one of the uh, best uh, options available for international investors however in the indian uh, perspective exchange traded funds are not so liquid hence these options are not so well uh, uh, are taken by indian investors the last but not the least we have uh, uh, trade in gold futures and options so who want to benefit out of price volatility of uh, gold and silver happening in domestic markets depending on the movements in international markets so if you are an investor you have four to five options available as far as investment in gold is concerned so irrespective of whether your in, uh, investment in gold is to is for need based or a desire based or for a return based you will have uh, four to five options available on your platter Uh, this option is uh, necessary to understand from a perspective 
uh, wherein you are trading in gold futures and options. There are four products available uh, on the gold futures platform provided by MCX. Uh, the first product that is available to trade is in the form of gold, uh, which is a thousand gram or one kg lot size. Every one rupee move upside or downside in this particular contract will give you a profit or loss of hundred rupees. The expiry is nothing but the fifth of the contract month. For instance, if it is a December expiry, uh, <coughs> fifth of that contract month would act as a expiry date. You cannot continue your positions uh, after that particular date. The delivery logic stands compulsory. It means if you keep your positions till the fifth of that particular contract month, you are liable to take delivery of the gold contract. Similarly, you have gold mini option to trade. This is for those investors who really do not have big pocket size. The lot size that is available to trade is 100 grams. Every one rupee uh, upside or a downside would, profit, uh, would probably give you a profit or loss of say 10 rupees. Expiry again is fifth day of the contract month. Similarly, you have gold guinea and gold petal as an option for small term investors who uh, do not have big pockets in gold. Uh, understanding margins and tick size if you are trading in futures also has an important value. Assuming the price of the gold last traded was 50,000 rupees per 10 grams and if you are trading in say lot size of 1 kg which is nothing but 1000 grams, the total contract value would be nothing but uh, 50,000 per 10 grams into, uh, into the, uh, the total size of the contract which is 1000 grams, you will get the contract value as 50 lakh. Assuming that 10% of the total contract value is the margin, which means if you want to trade one lot of gold, 5 lakh is the margin which you need to have in your account. But no need to worry if you do not have this kind of money, you possibly can invest in gold guinea and gold petal, which is one of the best ways of investing in gold uh, as far as retail investors is concerned. Uh, this is just to give you a simple understanding how the expiry of contracts happens on the MCX platform. For instance, if you are trading in February 2021 contract, the expiry of that particular contract would happen for 5th February 2021. Similarly, it goes for April, June, August and October. At one point in time, you will have 6 contracts to choose, uh, choose from. But uh, one th uh, point to keep in mind is, but the most recent contract will have much more liquidity when compared to other contracts. This is for those uh, who wants to understand how gold price in the international markets are converted into are converted into rupees. Um, just to give you a brief idea, uh, spot price is nothing but the spot price in the international market. CIF, which is nothing but cost, insurance and freight, which is added to the uh, to spot price of gold. You get the value of do uh, dollars per kg of 99.99% purity. You have to convert <coughs> that into the value of rupee, uh, the currency rate at that particular point in time. Uh, you will get the total value of per kg to which you will add customs duty, which is calculated at the rate of $630 per 10 grams at the rate of 13%. You arrive at a landed cost per kg to which you add the bank cost uh, and then the, you get the final wholesale price of that particular gold price uh, that you want to arrive at and uh, you have to convert it into 10 grams. Uh, so, and, and this has to be compared with the MCX, uh, MCX parity price which you will get to know whether uh, MCX uh, price is trading at the premium or MCX price is trading at a discount in comparison to the price that is trading in the international markets. What drives the gold price is one of the important uh, <coughs> things one needs to know from an investing perspective. Whenever there is a market uncertainty, gold's appeal as a safe haven increases and it has really hold true in 2020 wherein the pandemic has really disturbed global uncertainty because of which investors have flocked towards gold uh, as a safe haven asset and gold has given double digit returns of almost 25-26% in the year to date. Which means the rule of thumb goes if uh, there is an uncertainty gold price should go up and risky assets should go down. While all these factors play an important role, the supply of gold and demand clearly has an important uh, role in the price direction of gold and hence all the fundamental factors discussed above 
has to be understood in the context when you are investing in gold. Uh, this uh, uh, plays a very important role if you are investing in gold. You really need to understand how the uh, uh, dollar index uh, direction is moving uh, because dollar index and gold inverse uh, gold uh, shares an inverse correlation. Uh, if you are able to understand in, uh, the direction of the dollar with regards to what is happening in the US economy, uh, you will probably go right on the uh, direction of gold. Which means if you have to understand gold as an asset class, you really have to understand dollar index as, an, uh, as a currency so that you have clear direction of gold. <clears throat> These are some of the indicators that one needs to look at if you are an investor of gold. Since we are talking about gold which is a global asset class uh, and US is one of the developed economy, you really have to watch out for all, all the economic important economic indicators released from the US. Consumer confidence released from the US uh, which represents 70% of the US economy is one of the important indicators which tells you about the state and health of US economy and if US economy is really performing well, I think gold price is correct and vice versa. Similarly, the GDP number released from the US uh, also tells you the state of US economy. Non-farm payrolls also tells you uh, uh, the kind of employment scenario in the US. Central bank meeting is one of the key agenda that is discussed in order to, de in order to have price direction of gold. Similarly, European Central Bank meeting and all the key central bank meetings that happens across the globe uh, play an important role in, in defining the direction of gold. Uh, this particular chart tells you how fund managers have been, uh, uh, been uh, uh, allocating gold as a part of their portfolio. If you see in this particular chart, almost whole of 2020, you have seen gold prices uh, stabilizing or possibly on the higher side. One reason for that particular uh, standpoint is the fund managers across the globe have been accumulating gold as you can see on the, on the right hand side of that particular graph. Almost uh, the fund managers globally have been accumulating gold as a part of their portfolio because of which they have seen a steady direction of gold prices heading higher. Uh, this particular uh, screen uh, tells you uh, what uh, 2020 ha has been for investors globally and almost every other number that you see in 2020 has been negative. While uh, uh, 2020 is coming to an end. Uh, we have uh, uh, the next year 2021 and there are some green shoots of recovery which is possible in 2021. Uh, so take into consideration that vaccines uh, 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 vaccines inoculation have been started in US, UK and it might possibly stand in the major part of the world. We really need to see how gold prices would react to the optimism with regards to the vaccination program. <coughs> Uh, this particular screen uh, uh, or chart would uh, possibly tell you the kind of investments that is happening in exchange traded funds globally. It is the first time ever that gold ETFs have added close to around 1000 tons uh, 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 surpassing the record of 2009s, which means collectively ETF inflows globally has been a better uh, performance indicator of how gold prices would react in the coming months. Out of this almost 1000 tons that has been accumulated in 2020, two third of, uh, of it has been North American funds which, uh, uh, which has uh, accumulated gold in the form of exchange traded funds. On the right hand scene of this particular chart, you have seen the performance of gold for the past five to six years, seven years uh, and 2020 has been the best year in comparison to last seven years because of the pandemic and the uncertainty with regards to the pandemic. Uh, that is uh, how uh, we would possibly talk about gold and its fundamental factors. Uh, the next commodity that we talk about is crude oil. Uh, it is considered as a black gold. I, uh, I would tell you about the situation that happened uh, in uh, April when the pandemic started across globally and how the current situation stands as far as gold as far as crude oil is concerned. Uh, when it was April, there was the largest 
ever surplus storage capacity that was created globally. Almost 7.2 billion barrels of crude oil was stored roughly in onshore and floating storage. And the storage capacity that was available for uh, oil to be stored stood at around 1.7 billion barrels. So this particular situation was there in April wherein almost all the global inventory was about to be full which resulted into negative pricing of oil. But now as we stand in December, the situations have drastically increased and drastically changed. This particular screen would tell you about how uh, the global uh, capex of uh, uh, oil and gas companies have been. The blue graph would tell you the initial capex expenditure of uh, global oil companies and the red uh, line would tell you about revised capex expenditure of global oil companies. There has been a significant downward revision by capex uh, of capex by oil companies globally because they do not see any optimism of revival in demand as far as 2020 was concerned. All the global economy has started now with regards to optimism with regards to vaccines. It really needs to be seen how oil and gas companies globally uh, uh, take forward this capex expenditure uh, and the investments in oil and gas. Virus has really created a uh, uh, disturbance across the oil industry and you can clearly see in this particular uh, uh, slide wherein uh, the, just before the pre-pandemic, uh, 650 rigs were operate, operating in the US uh, out of which uh, in April only 378 were left which means the kind of oil production that happened before pre-pandemic was reduced to half. Almost every other week 50 million barrels of crude were going into storage which means the oil, demand for oil came to stand still as far as April 2020 was concerned. Now we stand at this point. We stand at December. From the lows of around $36 and $38 for Brent, uh, which happened in November of 2020, we are at in December when almost oil prices have gained by around 28% and 26% from the lows. It is purely because of the vaccination campaign that has been kickstarted in US and UK. As far as current state of oil markets is concerned, oil and gas rigs continue to be increasing on the basis of optimism because of the inoculation program started by US and UK. But uh, uh, because of the GDP revisions uh, uh, by most of the global countries, uh, we see some green shorts of recovery coming for 2021. Uh, that was about crude oil. We would now discuss about base metals since lead, nickel, zinc, aluminum, copper are one of the most uh, important metals uh, on a global scale. It has to be understood in the context. Out of the entire base metal pack, copper is one of the metals which would possibly affect the health of global economy. And it is be uh, because it has its application in all the commercial and industrial applications, the importance of copper as an asset class cannot be understated. Uh, this gives you a snapshot of uh, the product that is listed on the M6 platform. You have aluminium, bigger contract. You have alumini, smaller contract. You have zinc, bigger contract. You have zinc, mini, smaller contract. The bigger contract lot size is 5 metric tons and the smaller lot size co uh, contract is 1 metric tons for both these commodities. Uh, this uh, would possibly tell you about how uh, uh, the contract specification stands if you want to trade in aluminium and zinc. This is a contract specification for lead, copper, lead mini and nickel. The contract size for lead stands at around 5 metric tons while the contract for lead mini stands at 1 metric tons. Similarly, the contract for two, uh, copper stands at 2.5 metric tons, while the contract size for nickel stands at around 250 kg. All this basic uh, information about uh, the commodity has to be understood in the context if you are a trader of base metals. Uh, you also need to have an understanding of when are the contracts launched and when is the expiry of that contract. Uh, this screen would possibly tell you the gist about how to trade that commodity. And if you want to take delivery of the commodity, which are the warehouses that are uh, possible uh, that you can take the delivery.
this screen would tell you about uh, the price composition of uh, rupee uh, when converted from international market since lme which is london metal exchange is considered to be base uh, to be benchmark for uh, all the uh, metals listed on the m6 platform this is how uh, the calculation of uh, a rupee uh, a rupee pricing comes into picture as per as uh, uh, international conversions happen so first and foremost lme cash prices are taken into consideration which is nothing but the spot price that is available on the lme platform uh, and to which you have to add the premium uh, or discount uh, uh, that the metal is trading in compared uh, to what uh, is there what what is the price of that commodity uh, on the exchange to this as usual you have to add a cost insurance rate for that particular uh, commodity in order to arrive uh, at a certain price and uh, once it is there in india you have to add basic customs duty which you can see on this particular screen it stands different for different metals and ultimately you arrive at a landed cost for which you need to have a customs clearing cost which is 1% for almost all the metals that is imported uh, uh, from across the globe finally you arrive at a landed cost which would almost be similar to the cost that you see on the mcx platform uh these are some of the important elements that impact the base metal prices so we are talking about china because china is one of the important consumers and producers of the base metals uh after the pandemic uh, uh, hit china china has drastically recovered and the pan, uh, the purchasing manufacturing index numbers from china have been significantly good in the past few months since we are talking about industrial metals the strength and the weakness of the us dollar plays an important role as we spoke about in our previous slide that uh, the direction of the dollar and the commodities are inverse and hence uh, in order to understand base metal as an asset class you also need to understand the dollar perspective clearly uh, market uncertainty is also one of the important factors when you are trading in base metals and it has to be understood in the context that every world event impacts the price of base metals as it is a global asset class Twenty twenty has been an year of base metals. You will see almost double digit, digit returns for all the metals, out of which copper stood the best with the returns of thirty five percent in the year till date, uh, followed by nickel, which is also one of the important commodities, and which is followed by zinc and aluminium. While lead has performed marginally by five percent. The important point that I want to convey here is that because of the easy liquidity that has been pushed by the central banks. all this li easy liquidity is chasing for higher returns and uh, base metals is one of the important asset class uh, uh, where investors have poured their money into 2021 would see possible green shoots of recovery and we hope this momentum to continue for base metal prices in 2021 as well this chart would tell you about how the industrial production activity is happening in china us and eurozone the blue line clearly represents the growth and revival in the industrial production numbers from china while us and eurozone still continues to be in the negative territory they're trying their best in order to bring back the balanced growth as far as industrial production is concerned in totality it is because of the uh successful uh, contained that uh, that china has really contained the virus which has led to speedy recovery from a pandemic led slowdown and it is a stimulus led demand which has uh, led to increase in prices of all the base metals in totality industrial production numbers from china us and zero zone in the recent months have been sounding very good which offers a good chance for all the metals to further over higher momentum as far as copper lead zinc aluminium is concerned uh this is one of the important slide uh, that needs to be understood in the context you can see the global electric car stock in 2019 almost 4.7 million uh, of global electric cars uh, that were stocked so which clearly uh, states the need for the use of metals since nickel copper and aluminium are heavily used in production of electric cars i think electric vehicles is the story that will be carried forward in the next year and the years to come 
and this will be the story going forward while uh, there has been a story about electric vehicles there has also been supply disturbances in major producing countries which is south america australia and south africa because of the pandemic almost all the uh, production capacities as well as smelting uh, and mining activities have been severely hit because of which uh, you have seen that uh, global metals have seen the rally in 2020 and uh, this possible rally would also continue in 2021 is what the best hopes for Uh, I think uh, uh, I have spoken about the vaccine and uh, US and UK and Canada have already started with the major inoculation programs. Uh, there are worries now that a second and third wave of the virus has been started in US and Europe because of which you will possibly some hindrances for uh, global metal prices to correct. Uh, but then all said uh, China's recovery stands good for base metals. Although most of the nations are struggling to bounce back from COVID, I think global central banks uh, uh, will possibly play their role in bringing the global economy back on traction. And as far as global central banks continue to push their liquidity, I think the metal uh, uh, counter is possibly going to have its uh, second best year as far as 2021 is concerned. Uh, now we have discussed with almost uh, major commodity fundamentals, we would possibly discuss about where gold prices are headed. At present, it stands at around 50,000 mark. Uh, you can clearly see on this particular screen that the next possible move as far as gold prices on the MCX platform is concerned is 52,000 followed by 56,000. There is a major hurdle at around 52,000 mark, but the direction of the gold taking into consideration the global uncertainty and pandemic would be on the higher side and the next possible mark uh, in possibly three to six months time frame would be around 52,000 followed by 54,000. This is a crude oil chart. Clearly, the optimism has been seen uh, in the recent weeks. You have seen a low of 2,500 rupees per barrel uh, in the second quarter of 2020. And from there on, there is no looking backward as far as oil prices is concerned. I have clearly pl plotted uh, the, the next possible uh, uh, price action as far as oil prices is concerned. If vaccination continues to happen across the global economy, I think oil prices are heading higher. And uh, as far as international oil prices are concerned, I think $60 uh, dollars look very much possible as far as Brent is concerned. While on the MCX platform, close to around 4,000 rupees and 4,600 rupees are two possible levels as far as next six months time frame as concerned for crude oil prices. This is a copper chart. Uh, it is trading in a channel and it is trading in a rising channel, which clearly means that the momentum for copper would possibly on the higher side. Uh, if uh, there is no flurry of news with regards to any slowdown and the hopes of vaccination will continue across the global economy, we would possibly see copper prices heading much, much higher than what it has been. I think. Uh, uh, although it stands at the resistance zone, if it breaks 610, 614 mark, I think prices are set to rally here from uh, 600 to almost 700 rupees per kg uh, in the next six months time frame. I think we have best scenario as far as top price is concerned. Nickel is also one of the important commodities that will be used as far as electric uh, vehicle story is concerned. I think. Uh, uh, it is uh, trading at the resistance zone at around 1300 uh, rupees per uh, uh, kg and uh, the next possible mark uh, for nickel prices as per this chart uh, supports and resistance zones are concerned I think 1414 followed by 1450 are two possible price marks as far as nickel prices is concerned. Thank you very much and uh, we would like to have questions from your end uh, and we will continue to have this webinars uh, uh, time and again and uh, we hope to see you again through your participation. Thank you very much. Uh, if there is any questions, we are happy to take it.
किसी का कोई सवाल है तो पूछ सकते हैं एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द पार्टिसिपेंट आर वेलकम ओके व्हाट आई कैन सी इज लॉट ऑफ पार्टिसिपेंट्स बहुत सारे पार्टिसिपेंट्स जो है वो हिंदी में चाह रहे हैं तो नेक्स्ट uh, जो सेशन रखेंगे हम वो पूरा हिंदी में रखेंगे और पार्टिसिपेंट्स uh, की कंफर्टेबल लैंग्वेज में रखेंगे बिकॉज ये फर्स्ट वेबिनार था 2020 एंड होने के बाद इसलिए ये वेबिनार जो uh, इसलिए ये इंग्लिश uh, में किया गया है नेक्स्ट वेबिनार जो है वो हिंदी में रखेंगे I think we do not have any questions. If you do have any questions, you can post on the platform. We would be happy to answer those questions on the platform. Thank you very much. Uh, have a nice day.